Welcome back to the Compound Podcast. This is episode 224, 224 of the Compound Podcast presented by Parse Rum, our friends at Parse. Make them your friends at Parse. Go to Benny's, get yourself some Parse. It's about that time of the year when you just start sitting down for a little football Saturday, Sundays, having yourself a little Parse Rum for the night game, maybe. Yes. You know what I've combined with Parse before? I'm I'm dead serious. I've done this with the with the three year, of course. That's the mixer. I've combined it with apple cider, and it's incredible. I recommend wow. it highly to everyone because I also love apple cider. But it's it's that, a good combo. That is an electric combo. Maybe we can uh, maybe we can get that drink in a bar or something. Have them do an apple cider and yeah. Parse drink for a little Saturday Sunday football I rumble. Like that. Um, lots to talk about. Lots to talk about. I think Cubs Yanks is the is top of mind. The Yankees came to Wrigley for the first time since I believe 2017. That's crazy. Um, I just missed that series. I just missed that series. I, I got caught up right after. Um, that was a good series for you to miss, though, right? The Cubs. I believe the Yankees swept because I was in college and I remember really having a fun time with that series, like running around. I think I ran around with a broom. I think I was being a real like dick to whoever I was living with. I was like not being a good friend because I was having time, a lot of fun with the Yankees. Only time I happened, remember that I think, from seven years ago. I think I might. Well, be they were the defending there. World Series champions. So you got to remember sweeping them on the road. Big deal. Sorry, Ian. go ahead. Nope, nope. Don't worry about me. Uh, I think that the Cubs walked off maybe the last game of that series. I remember. I think I was in Chicago because I had gotten hurt in AAA um, with a little thumb thing. And I was in Chicago doing some imaging, and I remember Anthony getting hit. Nope, it was they, they got swept. You're right, they got swept. I remember Anthony getting hit by Chapman in the forearm and just wearing it. But they did. They got swept 2-3, to 6-11, to 4-5. The last game was a really good game, and I remember they they won, and then I was running around with the broom. I was having – it's one of those memories I just – you remember instantly where you were, and I was like, yep, no, I remember that. That was a sweep. It was fun. Man, Jacoby Ellsbury that. leading off. Wow. What a throwback. What a time. One of the seven <laughs> games he played for the Yankees. That's so I sick. I was going to say, talk about a guy that just kind of stole some money there. That was wild. But the funniest part was he kept going to the facility. Like we had yeah. Kyle McDonald, who was a Yankees minor leaguer, do some warehouse game stuff for us at John Boy. And he was like, he was down rehabbing, I think. And he was like, yeah, it was like me and Jacoby were in the same group. We were just like, he was showing up, doing his, doing his stretching every day, doing like two hours going home. The last game of that series I'm looking at right now was an 18 inning affair. 18 innings. Schwarber led 18? off. 18? Yeah. Schwarber led off, got seven at bats. Uh, Wilson Contreras. What did he go? What did he go for? The... Two, Don't two say for over. Se- two for okay, seven. I was like, if someone had an O for seven day, like that's a tough there, Well, there's some there's some eight at bats in here, actually. Javi was two for eight. Contreras was one for eight. This is, this is a crazy box score, but I will just read you everybody that threw for the Cubs. John Lester, Justin Grimm, Wade Davis. So Lester went seven, one earned, three hits. Justin Grimm threw two innings. Wade Davis threw one inning. Carl Edwards Jr. threw one inning. Koji Iwahara threw one inning. Wow. Montgomery threw two innings. Dunsing threw two innings. And Pedro Strope threw two innings. That is nuts. I'll bet you there was a call up or two the next day after uh, using literally every arm you have. Riz did Riz did get hit by a pitch in the eighth inning by Chapman. I remember that. It was like a hundred right to his forearm and he just wore it. And it was Which Sunday night crazy. baseball. So it was this was like an eight o'clock start. So it didn't finish. You know, it was one of the three reasons again. I remember it was good to be in college because I could stay up to like whatever time that was, two AM to f- see the end of this game. What's crazy is that went 18 and there was the Tigers A's a couple days ago went to 13. And I feel like nowadays, like 13 is a crazy long game. Like that just doesn't happen anymore. Never happens. And that's one of the best parts about the run around second base is that you don't have 18 inning affairs. 
It really is. I think it's I think I fought it when that first came out just because I like those long, weird games, but kind of like no one really wants to sit through 18 innings. That's a long time. You got things to do. I just talked about how this was a distinctly remembered game that I cherish. I completely disagree. I want more 18 inning games. I know I'm in the minority, wow. but like this is a game I instantly remember. True. And I feel like we're that's losing fair. those. And that's the stuff that makes me sad, I guess. You, you know who else remembers that 18 game? Whoever had to get sent down the next day or put up yeah. high out to get another pitcher. True. Uh, uh, Ian, we also didn't we didn't mention at all that Zach's not here. Yeah. Yeah. I was just glossing people right over noticed. that. But people would have noticed, but yeah, people would have noticed, I guess. We got to tough... watch it. They've seen that Zach's not been here the whole time so far. Yeah. We got a tough schedule where uh I'm on the west coast. Dakota is also on the West Coast and Zach is on the East Coast. So we decided to do a morning recording uh, 10 a.m. on the West Coast. So Zach's probably close to at work or at work. Um, Matt, and we're, he's halfway through oh, his he, golf round. Oh, he's off today in golfing because he hates us. Yes, yes. Well, I tried to bail him he out. He yelled at me. He's at work, but. So he yelled at me after I messaged and they're like, oh, I can do the morning because I don't work till two today. And he's like, oh, like you screwed me over there. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, I mean, I was golfing. Now I look bad that like I have an off day and I'm golfing. I go, I mean, we talked about doing in the morning because Ian is on the West Coast. Like, I don't know. I, like, I don't know what to tell you. It, it makes it easier for everyone. It helps Tom a ton that we're not doing it after Ian's game. So it's not a 1 a.m. start time of recording. And Zach couldn't so have I, done a night. Zach couldn't have done a night 1 a.m. No. start on the East Coast no. anyway. So this just made more sense. But we miss him. We'll see him next week. Um, I'm sure he'll he'll be chomping at the bit to get back here and give his takes. But Cubs Yanks, first time since 2017, didn't get swept. So that's uh, we might be better than the 16 team. Didn't get swept. Scored, uh, scored two runs the whole series. Scored two runs the whole series. It was it was really. I don't know if the Yankees have played a series this year where they have not hit a home run. That would be really hard for the research team to figure out. But. I'm I'd say that's a pretty they safe. haven't because if you put two that's of their guys together, bat. they have almost a hundred homers. Uh, but the you know, no no home runs in a three game series from either team. The wind it was two colder days the first two days. Um, at Wrigley, the wind was blowing dead in at a million miles an hour. John Carlos Stanton, who we talked about last week, hit a ball to right center, one hundred and ten point seven, I think. At 24 or 25, it's a homer everywhere. It's like a guaranteed yeah. home run. Absolute yeah. rocket. It was coming backwards. Got caught That's at the crazy. wall. And then Judge hit a ball 107 7 at 26. Homer everywhere coming backwards. Or maybe it's just on Baseball Savant, but there's like a tool where like you can literally plug in the metrics of like launch angle and exit velo and it tells you like, percentage chance of it being a homer like you said i bet those are like 99 percent home runs yep yeah that's wrigley for you and stan the first day stan or um soto hit a ball like 106 at 37 that i caught on the track coming back too high it's just like too high the uh wrigley was in, the, was in, in that ball with soto the that was in the seventh in the first game i took notes i have a couple notes asking questions that was one of my notes because i wrote that you were fighting the sky. That you were fighting on that one. That one was a, a, a tough one for you. Yeah, t- it was kind of tough. Sun, um, sun, sky ball was uh, coming backwards and fighting it, but made the catch. There's a lot of those, especially with the sun and the wind and the clouds at Wrigley. And it gets it's hard in April, and it gets hard again in September with kind of the sun sits a little bit lower in the sky. So. You know, there was a couple sun balls in that series. Um, you got two gold gloves for a reason. I mean, you're catching it. Never doubt. Never. Did, I'm not going to. This isn't. This is going to sound bad. There was a play. I forget if it was Saturday or what day it was where I mentioned how I don't love how PCA catches the ball. And it was a tougher play, but it kind of hit off the end of his glove. And it looked like one of those where like, I, I think it could have been caught. And I love PCA. I'm not knocking PCA. I love PCA. But that was one where I was like, this is exactly what I was talking about. I think it could have been caught. Yeah, Rizzo hit a ball to left center. on. The, I think it might have been the first game of the series. Rizzo hit a ball to left center. And he was kind of in between us. Um, and Pete came running over and called it. And just it's one of those, like, he's running right into the sun. 
the the wind is moving that ball a lot. Tough play for sure. Yeah, just yeah. kind of hit off the end of his glove. I think one yeah one of the underrated things about Wrigley is just how hard those conditions can be out there. He had one yesterday that was just directly in the sun. Um, I think Stanton hit it to center and it was just directly in the sun. He kind of was fighting it the whole way and didn't come up with it. And it's just it's part of playing there. It's it's such a challenge to get in the right spots and and sometimes you just can't. Sometimes you just can't get to a place where you can see the ball enough to make the catch. It's also not underrated like it's pretty well known but like the ivy and brick walls like you're scared a normal human is scared to run into those walls so like the closer you get to the track you're like i'm gonna die if i don't pull up like i have to pull up here i'm running into a brick wall at full speed i'm pretty sure the yankees announcer said the first game of the series they were like this is crazy like it's a brick wall out there and one of the (laughs) announcers went out and actually felt the wall and the ivy to be like is it really that hard and he's like no it's a brick wall (laughs) <laughs> I, this is like the classic like I remember when I worked for the Yankees the one story that a lot of other teams would do in the pregame show was one day they'd go to Monument Park and they would go around and do like a quick like oh look at here's all the people famous people in Monument Park the Cubs version of that is the Wrigley Field wall every yeah. pregame show wants to go out there and be like look at this it's brick like you move around these these the ivy this is brick and the Yankees broadcast right in literally was like, Alex Verdugo cannot run into the wall. He's kind of n- notorious for running into the wall. And if he runs into this wall, like you're just, you're very injured. Like you just like break an arm. Like this is not a wall you could possibly run into. I mean, yeah, we had, we had two plays this year. One early where Cody Bellinger went into the wall in center and he broke his rib and he didn't hit it like all that hard. But it's a brick wall, and he broke his rib. And then I had a play uh, about a month ago where I went into it really hard and messed up my shoulder. Um, I had to sit out for a game, but still feeling the effects of that. And like I, I hit it yesterday, and I did a better job of like kind of more on the the rear end and low back area. My hip doesn't feel great today. After that, I'll tell you. But that's uh, it's part of it. It's it is. Real brick out there. It's real brick. But the Yankees broadcast was saying, can't you just put like padding and then grow the ivy over the padding? Just wouldn't be the same though. It loses the allure. Someone new comes to the outfield. Or you're kind of now the most veteran, you know, Jay Hayes gone. You're the most veteran guy at this point. who's played the most games out there. Are you the guy that tries to like talk through how to play the Wrigley outfield being of like, Hey, like, you also treat this as like a poisonous wall. Like you, this is not a normal wall. This is not one you can go tumbling into. You kind of have to give up on almost some balls. Yeah. It's talking about the different aspects of playing outfield there. And one of those is like, Hey, this thing is made of brick. I know that like your whole life you've been used to not being afraid to go and jump and there's no home runs to rob. There's a basket. You can't get over the basket. There's no home runs to rob. And like, if you're going full speed, after a ball like at some point you have to make the decision that it's more valuable for us to have you on the field for the next month or two than to make this one catch and like that's kind of the the unfortunate recipe of Wrigley Field is like like we lost Cody for with that rib for two three weeks you need those guys on the field so it's like that one play and like how often do you actually make the play when you go full force into a brick wall? I'll tell you, the one that I messed up my shoulder, I didn't catch. The one that the one that <laughs> Belly broke his rib on, he didn't catch. Like those ones that you you go and try to be Hercules and jump into the wall, a lot of times the wall doesn't give and it uh it's really hard to make those plays. So just at some point and Jay taught me that pretty early in my career. It's like it's brick. Like, don't forget. <laughs> it's not worth it, I promise. Yeah. Got to stay on the field. House call TD. Six points. Whatever you call a touchdown, they matter more at the DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sportsbook partner of the National Football League. Right now, all new customers who bet just $5 will instantly get $250 in bonus bets plus one month of NFL Plus Premium. Now that's something we can all celebrate. That's $250 in bonus bets instantly in one month of NFL Plus Premium after betting just $5. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code COMPOUND 
And bet just $5 on any wager and get $250 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code COMPOUND, only at the DraftKings Sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash ft ball so we have the three game series no homers from both teams which has to be the first time the yankees have done that all year uh and i want to know if it's the first time in baseball that no team has hit a home run in the three game series but good games tight games we struggled to you know kind of produce runs in the first two um and then sunday cole did a great job but we we scored too early jameson did an awesome job of keeping the yankees lineup at bay and then our our bullpen kind of locked it down, so it was nice to get out of there with a win. It was really cool to see Riz come back, the reception, the video, um, just the fans' appreciation for him was was really a special thing. Real quick before the Rizzo thing, you love starting out games with a double. You live for it. That's crazy. It's really, it's really fun. It's like five in the last two weeks that you've let off the game with a double. That's electric. The Rizzo thing, though, was sick. Like, did you guys do anything or like, did they do anything other than like his walk up song? Like, was there any like tribute? When was like the tribute video? Yeah, the like, tribute during video, the game. Day one, no, day one, kind of 10 minutes before the game started. Um, there was a nice, you know, long tribute video from him getting traded over here to, you know, early in his career to his, you know, the, charity stuff that he did in the city with um the children's hospitals and and childhood cancer and then um and then obviously the world series stuff so it was a beautiful tribute video his whole family was on the field um with him right by the yankees dugout and you know they there was a really warm welcome for him um and his whole family got to see that and be there and his family meant a lot to to the city with their involvement in the rizzo foundation and what they did as a family for the city so just pretty cool to um for all of them to get to experience that after, you know, a pretty long time not coming back to Wrigley. Did you see he, I, I think I saw a tweet that he like sponsored like 200 children's hospital kids to come to the game on Friday. Like that's so cool. Yeah. He went actually on the off day, he went to Lori's children's hospital and did visits with some of the patients there. And then um, his foundation brought out like 200 kids. Uh, I don't know if it was just on so Friday cool. or, or throughout the weekend, but they do such a good job. You know, they've, they were so huge in Chicago. They've obviously expanded into New York, New York now, but they continue to do great work in Chicago and support there. Um, he might even have a whole wing of that Lori's children's hospital. Um, now it, it's just, it's impressive. And he did great fundraisers when he was here and it was always a, a big event during the season. So, you know, they still continue to do uh, a walkathon in Florida, a couple other events throughout the year in, in New York, and I do one every summer with his foundation in Chicago, in the suburbs, actually. It's a big fundraiser, so I go out there and, and do that uh, every year, um, and just, it's pretty cool, and, and he continues to make a huge impact. It looked like he was getting a little emotional. Uh, I saw, like, a clip of the pregame video, like, when he was getting the ovation. Like, yeah, it, it's I mean, got to be sick he, I, for he him, like, coming back. Yeah, I think it was really special. You, when you're, go I, I, don't, I don't think as a player, you know, he knows he made an impact here. He knows he was the captain of that team and changed the direction of the franchise and helped, you know, bring the World Series and break the curse. Like he knows that he did all that stuff, but I guess you never really, you never really know how you're going to be welcomed back and like, he knew it was going to be a warm reception, but I think no matter how, like what you think, actually getting to see that and getting to feel it and be there, I think it, it'll always kind of overwhelm you. I was actually surprised he wasn't like pure waterworks. Yeah. Well, I thought, I, he, I I thought he, was he was going to be to like a, together. Yeah, yeah. He, he held it together well because I thought he was going to be like a baby and I thought he was just going to be like bawling. Did you did you tear up at any point? I teared up. Did you up get a little emotional? Yeah. 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 Did you I mean, get Danny to talk Mueller, to him? Danny, Danny Mueller 
was, you know, obviously all the clubhouse guys and everything were in the dugout too. And, you know, I think Danny held it together better than all of us. I was surprised that Danny wasn't just an absolute ball of goo. Uh, yeah. But his, you know, I got, I got emotional, you know, just thinking about all the times and like the, some of the clips that come up that I was there for and all the times and all the things. And, um, I got emotional seeing his family. That's, that was, yeah. you know, they, they've always been so great to me. They've been great to my family. Um, both his parents are, are unbelievable people and his brother and so seeing all of them on the field is what really got me. Me and Tom have beef though. Rizzo's first at bat back set up beautifully top of the second inning. He was able to lead off that inning. So it was perfect. They were able to give him time to get his praise, get his ovation. But for some reason, Yes Network wanted to cut to that midway through the walk-up. Tom, I know you're not happy about it. Let's hear it. I was nervous just knowing how TV production was working, just on the, on the most basic level. I was nervous when I knew it was coming out of a commercial because sometimes those commercial breaks, they're time. So, you know, it's the same amount of time no matter what. So I was like, as sometimes – people in a moment like that want to speed up. You want the moment to happen. So they, it happens sooner than it might, you know, there's before the allotted times over the commercials. So I was nervous that it was what was going to happen happened where we came out of the commercial break and they were already like half, they already introduced Rizzo. Like it was just not the moment I wanted it to be. And I got up, uh, I, I was doing work and I made sure to stop it early so I could watch the pregame show. Shout out to Todd Frazier, who I, I like. Did some stuff with us at John Boy, but they didn't show any of the Rizzo pregame stuff either. And I thought that was disappointing. I really wanted to see the reaction to him being introduced for the first time at Wrigley. That it almost felt like even in the at bat, you know, I mean, you were there, you can tell me how you felt. It felt like the more emotional moment was the first moment, which makes sense. It, it, it felt like the pregame moment was the real, like, we're going to give him like the three minute ovation and everyone's going to be emotional and he's going to watch the video. So even the at bat, not only were we late to it, but it already felt like we kind of missed the key mm -hmm. moment to me. So I was like disappointed that the, I mean, we're doing it again, like the brick wall at Wrigley story on the Yankees pregame show. Like <laughs> respectfully, I, I know that story. Like I get it. I'm more locked in on the Cubs than other people, but you know, I would have rather seen the Rizzo that it, it felt like such a big story to me. And I was surprised that it wasn't being covered that way by the Yankees. And I guess maybe that's a product of me, being around Cubs fans in 2016 and understanding what that championship means to them. Anthony Rizzo broke one of the greatest curses in the history of sports. Like that mm -hmm. guy and was like the guy who caught the final out him coming back to Chicago for the first time to me is a huge event. And I was surprised it didn't, wasn't treated that way by the broadcast. I would say, and I think you would agree. agree. Yeah. It was surprising. Like you said, like, I feel like that's a pretty huge return, like in just the scheme of baseball, like you said, he was the captain of the team that broke the curse like in his first time back in Chicago in two years, I feel like that served a little more attention on like the broadcast than what it seemed to get, which was disappointing. It was still sick to see everything, but like I would have liked a little more like insight into like how everything was going on. Like I didn't, I never, I haven't seen the tribute video. I just saw a clip of Rizzo like coming out of the dugout, like to applause. I just I wanted a little more coverage of it because it seemed like a pretty big return back home. I mean, it was it was a huge moment. He it was a three and a half minute video, and then he like the ovation. He was out there, you know, waving to the fans for a good amount of time because they yeah. would not sit down. And then when he got his first at bat, there was an ovation every day for his yeah. first at bat of the game, and a hat, you know, a helmet tip every day. But the first one was electric. electric loud it was you know it was really cool and i wish the broadcast would have shown that because it was it was a cool moment and they played his whole walkout so like his walkout was legendary at wrigley too it was the same first first at bat every day and it was you know our whole dugout would do something for his walkout you know it was intoxicated and it was dun, 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 and the whole dugout oh. would be <laughs> yeah and were you guys at, doing at it the, at the end it goes Woo! so like the whole it was this big thing where the whole dugout would like do something to his walkout the whole crowd was clapping it's one of the best walkouts that i've ever been a part of where the whole it, it's like 
Charlie Blackman in Colorado, it's like the entire stadium is in unison on his walkout. That was like one of the coolest things about it. And so they played it first purse at bat every day of the series and the fans got into it. The fans loved it. The fans remembered it. Like it was a pretty cool moment and the broadcast really could have captured that. That's what I was going to say. It's one of it's it's got to be a top five, 10 walkout of all time, or at least like of recent memory, just like you said, like the crowd's involvement, the dugout always got locked in. I wish there was a camera on you first, first so bad. I bet you were out there clapping, getting fired up. Um, but yeah, that it, it was disappointing to not get to see the entire moment from like the second he started walking from the on deck circle, because it just, it's such a cool walk up and the whole crowd was on its feet, like clapping along still even when he's on another team. Um, but yeah, it, it got was out with the bases loaded in the bot in the top of the first with Rizzo on deck. And I was really like, I mean, obviously I want the Yankees to score. I'll just spoil alert. I, that's Gross. what I was rooting Tom, for. Tom, come on. But I also, I really wanted him to get on because I was, I was very worried about, it. I was like, at what you just talked about, I was like, I want to see this at bat from like the time that he, his name gets announced. And I was very concerned it wasn't going to happen out of the commercial break. And then when they came out of the commercial break and you could tell he had already done the walk up, I was like, we might as well. I was I was so annoyed. I was like, we might as well not even see the at bat. Like, I'm, yes. I'm so mad now that I don't even really care about the at bat. I mean, I it's, agree. that that moment was more important than one or two commercials for, you know, what I mean, like that they played the second. They played the same commercial twice in a row on the local broadcast that I was on. So when they played the second time and then I realized that was what made me miss the Rizzo walk up, I was unhappy. I had I was a bad five minutes. Can I say can I say one thing about Wrigley before we move on from from this Yankees Cubs discussion? Mm -hmm. Wrigley this year, as far as park factor, is the second worst ball yard in the big leagues, only uh, behind T Mariners. Mobile Park. Mariners, yep. The it's ninety two overall. You love team. this ballpark factor thing. I'm just, you, I'm you're just on trying. I'm just trying. We just had a series where the Yankees with a guy who has 50 homers hit zero home runs. So I'm just trying to well, good pitching. Provide a little. That's a good thing. You, you sound like you're mad that you guys didn't give up any homers. I'm mad, the Cubs, I'm mad the Cubs didn't hit any homers. Uh, 92 <laughs> ballpark factor. You try going out there with a round wood weapon and trying to hit into a 40 mile an hour gust right into your face. I, I hit the other Not day. Not comfortable. I hit the other day because we had to for like this study. Uh, best exit dealer I could get was 96. Not great. Not great. Yeah. Got some things I can work on. Um, I'll tell you something. 96 with the women blowing in at 40 is not making it, not making it no. past 300 that feet. Might, that might be a pop-up on the infield. Yeah. His ball's coming backwards at you. Uh, 92 <laughs> Man, couple, overall right? on the – I'm going to get through this. 92 overall on the ballpark factor. <laughs> it is uh, 85. This is out of 100. So 100 is – average uh the top ballpark being cores is a is a 110 on the park factor uh chase field 105 so uh wrigley is 85 on runs uh 82 on doubles that's really bad that is really really bad um it, and it's hilarious 89, 89 on homers so Really bad, really bad to hit it Wrigley this year. Just saying. nobody, nobody likes to get interrupted on this pod at all. We have all had moments where we didn't like it, but no one fights through it more than Ian. Of like, he won't let us like cut in. That's why he's the boss. Like, well, if Dakota, you try to cut me off, like I'll the, break down. Dakota, I was going to interrupt the good ballpark factors eighty-two bit that was going on for like the third minute. So you know, we had to let that one go. <laughs> that was just a great one that we had to make sure we got the whole of. I get it. Ian, you're really hilarious. tough place to hit this year. That's all I'm saying. Tough <laughs> place to hit. It's always that's a tough place to hit. That's brought to you by Bruce Bolt. Bruce Bolt ballpark factor. Uh, Wrigley, really tough place to hit. But if you have Bruce Bolt, it gets a little easier. BruceBolt.us. Go to Bruce Bolt. Check out my batting gloves in the signature series. If all balls rolling around, maybe go to Bruce Bolt. Get yourself some batting gloves. Get yourself an elbow guard, a shin guard. An arm sleeve that Dakota likes to wear to keep his arm nice and fresh. Bruce Bolt dot US. Should we talk about the NL wild card picture? Real AL? quick, can we touch on your guys' combined no hitter before we get to the wild cards? Yeah, yeah that's that was one. pretty cool. That was pretty cool. I I texted you, Ian, and I said, 
I hated that Shota was at 95, not meaning that he should have went back out because like if he was at 95 after eight, I would have said you got to give him one more. But 95 through seven is like, hey, man, like best case scenario, you throw 10 pitches each inning, which already like doesn't happen. And you're at 115. Like that's already pretty high. Um, so it was it kind of worked out better that he was at only through seven. So you didn't have to force like 110, 115 pitch outing. But pretty sick. Like you bring in Pearson after that, who is disgusting, and then Porter Hodge, who's disgusting, and very cool to see a no hitter, especially in like a pretty easy game. Like I think you won that game twelve zero. Um, I asked you, Ian, was there any like cool plays that kind of saved it? I don't think there's anything too crazy. So let me go backwards, and I'll mm-hmm. go forwards. I'm mm-hmm. going back to go forward. Sure. So Shota's at 95 pitches. Obviously, fans, everybody wants to see him come back out. One of the things that happened there was Pearson comes out of the bullpen to booze, which is a grinder. Uh, He's getting booed coming out there. At 95 pitches, you know, Shota has been awesome for us all year. He's made all of his starts. He's been reliable. But he also is coming, this is his first year in the big leagues, he's coming from pitching once a week in Japan. Mm -hmm. So he would only pitch once a week. They would have a, every Monday was off. They had a six-man rotation. So pitching once every five days is very different. They've been trying to give him six days rest as much as they can, whether that's working through off days or moving guys around around the all-star break. But they've been trying to make sure that he gets six as many times as he can, trying not to make him throw back-to-back five-day rest as much as they can. And we're, we need him down the stretch here. So to push him to a place where he's throwing 100 and, you know, 10, 115, 120 pitches just to get the no-hitter kind of puts him in a bad place going into the rest of the year. And so that's part of the calculation there. The other part of that is we were up big. You know, you didn't need him to go back out. So yeah, those are a couple of factors. The other thing that was cool about it was that we had an off day the next day. So we could use Pearson and then use the closer in a 10 run game to try to get the no hitter and let those guys have a day the next day. So that was a nice part of it to try to go out and get the no hitter. I would say as far as like great plays, there wasn't anything that was like, oh my God, that guy made a diving catch in this game. He did a great job of, got a ton of ground balls. There was a play early. There was a play early that was changed from a hit to an error. It was like in the first inning. Um, and it was originally ruled a hit. And then one inning later, they changed it to an error in like the second or the third inning. And so that happened. But also, Nico early in the game, maybe a third or fourth. There was a 113 mile an hour ball from O'Neill Cruz, one hop that he made a great play on. It wasn't like it was just a really hard play. And he kind of drop stepped and and made a great it was one hop right at him, just crush. And he made a great play on that. Um but nothing really crazy. There wasn't like a a nut so catch um in it. But Dansby so the Cubs have been pretty fortunate. You know, that was Kyle Hendricks' fifth no-hitter I think he's seen. I think both of Arietta's, Alec Mills are combined in 21, and then that combined. So Kyle's seen five. That was my third. Dansby had got to the ninth inning in two, but he had never been on the field for a no-hitter. So one of the reasons he stayed in that game, because, you know, some of us came out, he stayed in the game because he had never been a part of one and really wanted to be you know, on the field to finish that game. And so he stayed and he actually, made, I think he got all three outs in the ninth inning at shortstop. Yeah. So did. it was pretty cool um, for him to get to be a part of that. And really cool for Miguel Amaya to get to call that game. Yeah. You know, a guy that has had a long road, had, you know, some injury bug in the minor leagues, made it up, struggled, you know, a little bit in the first half this year and really found his stroke. And to be able to call a no hitter and have that on his resume, that's a, a pretty special thing. He was fired up. Do you feel like added pressure the later it gets and like you realize what's going on or you kind of like, all right, got to go make a play. Like if it's anywhere near me, I'm laying out. Yeah. And definitely, you know, I've been in a couple different ones now The you know, the one in LA was a three run game. Um, but the one in Milwaukee was like this, the Alec Mills Mm -hmm. one was a kind of a a blowout eight or 10 run game. Uh, and we all stayed in there to finish it, but it was, you know, that's it's definitely nerve wracking. And I started feeling it with Shota's in the six. And I was like, oof. And I said, I told them, I was like, hey, if Shota's in this game, I'm not coming out. Like until Shota's done, I'm not, I'm not going to be done. 
uh, and then he ends up finishing after the seventh. But so you hate so you hate the bullpen. Good, good to know. You hate bullpen pitchers. That's no. I trust hearing. our I trust good our other know. guys to go out there and make the play. Um, good, but it, good it was answer. good answer. It was the it was the first no hitter at Wrigley Field by the Cubs in fifty two years. That is so crazy. I did all see of that. the That's other no hitters. So Zambrano was on the road. Both of Arietta's were on the road. Mills was on the road. Combined in LA was on the road. So first Cubs no hitter at Wrigley in fifty two years, which was pretty cool. That's sick. No hitters are so cool. It's got to be even more nerve wracking. Have you ever been no hit hitting? No, the Cubs haven't been no hit since Cole Hamels in 2015. Ooh. Cole That's got to be even more pressure of like to the Cubs of like, we need to break this up. Like somebody find a way, hit a little bleeder out there. Like we have to get on base. That might be even more nervous than playing the field. The Cubs hadn't been no hit before the Cole Hamels one in like 7,000 games or something. It was like the longest streak in baseball that was going for a really long time until the Cole Hamels one in 2015. So if you take it, it's been like they've been no hit probably once in the last, I don't know, however many years, like probably 65 years, I think. It's like insanity. Yeah, that is crazy. Should we talk about the wild card? Yeah. Teating up, teating up. Both leagues. Both leagues. The the Mets went on a tear there, won like eight or nine in a row. I think nine in a row. So where it sits right now, Padres are two games up. Diamondbacks are one and a half games up. Atlanta and New York are tied for the third wild card spot. The Cubbies are five out of that. Still um, alive. Still alive. Still alive. Plenty of baseball left. Um it's a it's a race. I mean, those teams in the East are Playing well, the Mets are hot. Uh, you got San Diego and Arizona playing well, but it's it's tight, and there's there's opportunity. A lot of stuff happens in the last you know three weeks of baseball, so plenty of opportunity. And then in the AL, you have uh, Kansas City in the second wild card, two and a half up. Then Minnesota, Detroit, Seattle, and Boston, three and a half, three and a half, four, and then Tampa's five out of that. So. It's it's stacked up, and the so the, I guess you could say the last wild card spot in the NL right now is seventy eight and sixty five. In the AL, it is seventy six and sixty seven. So, you know, there's terrible. There's one team that's really pulled away in Baltimore in the in the East, you know, being tied up with the Yankees. But in the in the in the NL, it's uh, everybody's still kind of kind of in the picture there. I, I feel pretty confident that like the Padres and D backs, I would say it's unlikely they would blow their wild cards. Like I'd be very surprised if they didn't make it. Um, so it's really just like a three horse race. Obviously the Cubbies are going to have to get hot, hot. Maybe, maybe, you know, got 19 games left. Maybe we go 15 and four. Why not? Why not us? Um, they're going to have to make a little bit of a run, but the Braves and Mets like being tied. That's just good baseball. That's what you look forward to. And they play each other the second to last series of the year. Like if they're tied going into that, that's going to be so fun to watch. That's all you want is late. Go ahead. Yeah, one of the differences for us this year between this year and last year is last year we had a lot of games against some of the teams that we were competing with yeah. for either for the wild card. So we had a bunch of games with Arizona. We had a bunch of games where it was like, all right, if we beat these teams. Mm. Like we really control our own destiny. This year we don't. You know, we're we played uh, the last time we played a team we were competing with for like was St. Louis in the beginning of August. So we we have, you know, we have L.A., Colorado, Oakland, Washington, Philly, and Cincinnati. So we don't really have we don't have any teams that we control our own destiny with that we can go and like sweep a series and really flip things. So it's a little bit of we just need to focus on playing our game and winning series and then, you know, hoping that one of those teams comes back to us a little bit. That's almost, I mean, you want to play the team, obviously like that just makes it tough. Like you go and win six in a row and it's like, ah, but the Braves won five of six. Like that stinks. Like we gained one game out of all that. Like that kind of stinks. It was kind of what happened on our road trip. We, you know, we went on the road trip and went yeah. and won and the, the Braves, I think, won. We might have made up one or two games on the Braves through that stretch because they were winning, and then the Mets won nine in a row. So it was like, you know, we're playing really good baseball but not making up a ton of ground. Um, I think you gained two games. 
Yeah, I think, I think we gained, gained two games because you had cut it we to went, three. Yeah, we went from like five to three. And then we had a little bit of a tough uh, homestand there, losing two series in a row. But then, you know, we're only five out. You know, it could be worse. So mm-hmm. 19 games left. We were, I think we were three and a half up last year with a week to go. So, like, yeah, there's a lot that could happen in three weeks of baseball. And that's what, like, five might sound like a lot with 19 games left but like all you can ask for is like this time of year you're still in it right like it's better than being like five games below 500 and you're not like way out of it early but it's just like uh like we're pretty much done like you're still in the fight so it makes every day at the park i feel like a lot more fun knowing like hey we can still go compete and like we're playing for something yeah and and i think when you come into series like this you just hey we got to go play our brand of baseball and like if we finish september with a winning record and you know win 15 games i guess more than you want to win 15 and we got like 26 games in september maybe if you win you know we win 18 games in september or 16 games in september and you finish with a winning record in september it's like you know what that's you, know, you do you do the job like yeah do you want to win like 20 games sure like but if you if you finish with a winning record in September and we you know we finish X amount of games above five hundred, like it wasn't September that killed us. It was some of the other months of the year that we could have taken advantage of. So you just gotta do it one one game, one series at a time. It sounds cliche, but it's very true. Just go sweep the Dodgers, you know? It's easy. Yeah. They're just the best team in baseball. Let's just go sweep them. That how's that we might as well. How's that how's that division race right now? There that's gotta be uh little, they've right, pulled right? away a little bit yeah 86 i mean they're still they're pretty comfortable yeah they have a six game lead i but think i'll tell that... you what though tatis back for the padres has made the padres dangerous bogarts came back i think bogarts came back like a month or so ago maybe like six weeks but like their lineup is scary with that rookie jackson merrill hitting in like the six or seven hole too like they're a fun team to watch play baseball yeah i think the one of the most underrated moves this year is getting Luis Arise early. Mm-hmm. They went and got Arise early. He solidified the leadoff spot. I don't think he struck out in like three weeks. Yeah. She's, like two, she's like two strikeouts since the All Star break or something. Like he's just him hitting at the top of that order and getting on base for those guys to do damages makes him deep. Well, and they have like they have a good rotation, but then I think like Darvish came get... back too. Yeah, like you get to the back end, like they traded for Jason Adam at the deadline. Like that's an unreal late inning arm to go with like Jeremiah Estrada, who just throws the old rise ball. Who's their closer? Suarez. It is Suarez. And yeah, he is you got Robert Suarez, Suarez closing it. Like you, you get into the seventh and you're losing. Like you don't feel great about that facing the Padres. Yeah, and they have, you know, they have Cease and Musgrove and Darvish. Michael King has been great. Michael King. They're a scary team. They're a scary. I mean, that they, just shows they, you how good the the Dodgers are. That the Dodgers are still six games up. Yeah, I mean, they they did they fought the injury bug a little bit. With some of those guys, but yeah, they did a great job this year, kind of retooling. And they did great on the Soto trade. Both of those guys have been super productive for them. Plus, um, you know, like I said, going out and getting their eyes and making some additions. They got Cease. You know, he's been great. He's got two hundred punches in early September, like. So they've good. they've just done a really good job of not being afraid to continue to go get guys and trade their prospects and not be afraid that hey like if James Woods goes and is a great player like oh don't care yeah we're we're getting to the time where this is sports heaven we got football going on football's electric Lions won Michigan State won people forget people forget they both won this weekend and we got playoff baseball coming Whew. it doesn't get much better can I just say. Bears won. I knew you were going to say the Bears. Caleb Williams, first rookie quarterback, W. Good for him. It looked horrible. He looked horrible. Defense scored two touchdowns, and it's a team game. It's a team game. He looked horrible. He's going to learn on the fly. We care about wins. But can I just say one thing about my Cincinnati Bearcats? Yeah, I think they lost. They're playing Pitt. They lost. They're playing Pitt. I'm watching. It was an 11 o'clock central start, so I'm watching while I'm getting ready. Make it through the first half. They're up going into the, at the end of the first half. I think it was like 17 to 3. 
They yeah. drive all the way down the field. They got a chance to they got a chance to make it twenty to three. And uh and they got like a thirty yard field goal. Guy snaps it, laces out. No, no, no. Laces in. Laces in. The laces are looking directly at the kicker. We got a shank. Kick gets the ball back with like thirty seconds, a couple plays down the field. They kick a long field goal. So now it's seventeen to six. Not feeling great about the way the first half ended, but it's 17 to six. They've kind of dominated the first half. I'm like, here we go, boys. I come in the clubhouse uh, at one point in like the sixth inning. One of our clubbies is like, it's getting crushed. I'm like, that's the Bearcats. Love it. Go back down. I think the Bearcats are running away with the game. They're going to win. I come back. I check my phone. They lose 27 to 26. They lose by one point. 28, 27. 28, 27. Lose by one point. What happened? In they were up game. twenty-seven to six with a minute left in the third. Twenty-seven to six, and then and then everything went sideways. I watched the second half after, and I just was. I was just sad. It was a tough loss. Tough loss for the cats. Did you watch my Spartans go into uh, College Park and get a W? I know you did. I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, I, I didn't, know you did. But I'm happy. I know for you, you did. I'm happy you. for you. Two and zero. Two and zero. It's a good program. Just would have. Just would have loved to see the Bearcats. Uh, just finish that one off. It's gonna how be a, much, it's, it's gonna be a long year in the Big Twelve, I think. How much NFL did you watch yesterday? That's what that's what people want to know. Did you watch any? I, uh, you know, we were playing. I watched yeah. the you know, there was uh the noon the noon starts. I watched uh uh you know a little bit of that before we went out, but um I didn't get I didn't get to watch very much, I'm gonna be honest with you. But you're not even upset about it. like that that would that would ruin me. That's all I care about. That's all I want in life. I gotta work, man. Football. I gotta work. I was too busy That's winning fair. two to one. You're too busy getting wins. You're too busy leading too, off the game with doubles. Two I'll have plenty of time to watch football when we're done. All right. That's a good point. That's a good point. Got Danny Mueller's hot take. This is an interesting one. Danny I always Mueller. wonder, real quick, do you ever make any of these up or do these always come from Danny Mueller? No, this is they always come from Danny. I usually okay. send him a text and say, hot take, and then he gets back to me. He said sunglasses stink. Can't wear them. Don't like when other what? people wear them. Never know where to look at them because they are wearing them. So I find myself looking at their mouth. Danny, I I, this is the first him. Danny Mueller hot take that I'm fully on board with. I co-signed this. I completely agree. Sunglasses are always something that look cool, like in theory. But then when I have them, what do I do with them once I take them off when I'm out? Where am I putting them? Am I putting them on my shirt? I don't like that. That feels like a move. Am I putting them in my pocket? What if I sit on them? Now they're broken. Now it's now they're useless. A lot of things can go wrong with the sunglasses. Danny, I'm with you. I stand with you on this take. No one else will agree, but I stand with you. But what's crazy is I can picture, I have seen Danny in Arizona wearing sunglasses. Like he wears sunglasses. Ian, can you confirm he wears them? Maybe not often, but he definitely wear. it gets bright outside. I'm trying to think of a time where I've seen Danny in sunglasses. I can I'm not, picture it. In I'm Arizona. not coming I don't up. Know I'm not why. coming up with one, but I I believe you. I'll say you're not a huge glasses guy. I feel like. Well, in Arizona, and if you're walking around and like you know the in Arizona, when we walk out of our clubhouse in Arizona, oh like yeah, you, it's you go you go from being in the in the dungeon of like kind of the fluorescent bulbs. To like the pavement's white and it's bright and you, you get blinded. If you're not wearing sunglasses, it's a tough draw out there. Like, yeah. how do you? You're how do you? Wasted. I do agree. I do agree with you. I do agree with you, Tom. When you're out and you have a pair of sunglasses, figuring out where to put them and not leaving them like at a restaurant when you leave is a challenge. But I I do like a nice pair of sunglasses. I like a nice pair of sunglasses. I don't understand when people wear sunglasses inside, but I like a nice pair of sunglasses. I think it's very dependent on where you are. Like, I always have a pair in my car, just like, you know, sometimes it's bright when you're driving. You're driving into the sun. But other than that, like, I also would only wear, I'd wear them when I, like, shagged BP, or I'll wear them, like, if I'm at the beach or something. But I'm not, I don't wear them a ton either. I, I'm i not totally against it, Tom. Um, Like you said, like, if I'm going out somewhere, I'm probably not wearing sunglasses because I don't know where I'm putting those sunglasses. I don't want to wear them hanging from my shirt. I look, I look crazy. So I don't disagree. A lot of times if I go someplace where I'm wearing sunglasses with my wife, I'll make her bring the case and put it in her purse. And then that's a nice place for me to that's a good wear one. my sunglasses. 
Yeah. That's a good move. That's a pro move right there. I like that. Yeah. But I'm in on I'm in on sunglasses. I that's Danny looking at people's mouths because he can't look at their eyes yeah. is a weird. I've never had that issue. <laughs> You'll notice I, just, I didn't no. I didn't talk about that part because that part was like a weird side venture that I don't really <laughs> understand or agree with. I, I only go on the, the sunglasses portion. I don't know if there's that many people that can relate to that part of the take. No, I can't say I can ever picture someone with glass and be like, yeah, I was just staring at their mouth the whole time. Yeah. Uh, should we give people a slow screen time? I think mine's going to be really high. I was thinking about if this If we're yesterday. doing Sunday, I'm screwed. Yeah, I was thinking about this yesterday as we were traveling, and I gave up, and I was just like, this is going to be a bad. Oh, my God. It's going to be a oh, bad Oh, my time. God. Oh, it's honestly, honestly not as bad as I thought it'd be. Still really Sloan, bad. Sloan is the world's leading manufacturer of commercial plumbing systems. They're at the forefront of the green building movement and provide smart, sustainable, and hygienic restroom solutions by manufacturing water efficient products, including flush meters faucets, sink systems, soap dispensers, and fixtures for commercial, industrial, and institutional markets worldwide. To learn more, visit Sloan.com. I had four hours and 51 minutes. What's gross is you think that's high on a Sunday. Tom, go ahead. You, I think you beat me, Tom. I think I got last place. Sundays are bad for me when football's on. I think I had a win. Four hours, 22 minutes. Oh, 100%. Wow. You, what was yours, Ian? 451. You guys could almost combine yours and get my time. Actually, it might be lower than my time. Uh, nine hours, 33 minutes. I'm confused, though. Are you watching football on the phone? How, what are you doing? So you I have four fantasy, fantasy teams. I have four fantasy teams. So I got red zone on the TV. I got whatever games on Fox on my iPad. Typically, it's the Lions, but obviously they played Sunday night football. So I have one solo game on my iPad, and then I have red zone on the TV. Meanwhile, I'm scrolling the score app, just checking scores, seeing like not just scores. I need to know like, hey, George Pickens just caught a ball for 12 yards. That's two points. I like that. So I'm I'm nonstop on my phone. I, I don't want to give a, a free shout out to a brand here, but is the score app, a, is that like an app that's called the score app? Or are you calling like the ESPN app, the score app? No, it's literally called the score. Because going to scores from the score app is a very funny phrase that I think we should use more <laughs> often. No, it's literally called the score, and it just has like it has play by plays on there. Like I, I live on that app on Sundays. It's it's a does problem. It make you does it make you like really happy when one of your guys like gets one to catch? Like that's like you need to know right when it happens. It's a dream. I love it. I live for it. <laughs> hey, you have your interests. You like your fancy wine and your watches. I got football. Okay, I'm a man's man. I like football. That's it. So don't come at me about my football watching techniques, all right? You're like football, I got four like leagues, Parse, rum. which, Parse. by the way, real quick, one, two of them had a huge game last night from Cooper Cup and Jameer Gibbs to win me that one. And then uh, I'm in four leagues, lost one. And then I got Brees Hall versus McCaffrey tonight with me having an eight-point lead. So a lot of Brees Hall tonight. That's what we need to go three can and I one. Just, can I just give you one little fantasy football thing before we go? I'm yes. I'm in a league that uh, uh that is with a family and um you're in two leagues? I couldn't draft well, yeah, I couldn't draft because I was working. You know that's how that happens. Sometimes you just uh-huh. say the draft's going to be this time. It's like, well, I'm working. So it I, I it auto picked my team. The system. Okay. Hey. The system. And and how they do. <laughs> the how the system do? The yeah. auto draft in the first 7 rounds took six wide receivers and a quarterback. <laughs> That's crazy. We're airing it out. Air raid offense. I had six wide receivers before I had a running back. Can I tell you, you make some trades did yesterday? The two Probably running backs combined for three points. Okay. <laughs> so guess what? <laughs> Not the best system from the auto draft deciding that well, we didn't need a wide re- we didn't need a running back, but we needed six wide receivers. How does that happen? Whose algorithm that is-, is that? That Ian, you know crazy. how there's a uh, like NFL draft expert like Mel Kuyper give drafts like grades. What would you give your auto draft a grade for its draft? F. <laughs> F. But you might have got some good receivers in there at least. Yeah, didn't you didn't need to get anything good. I didn't need six of them. <laughs> That's true. You can't play and six everybody. Of them. And you know what everybody says? Everybody that you know they you're like, oh, you had to auto draft, so like we'll trade with you. Yeah, well, t- uh, people will trade with you. It'll be fine. I'm throwing out trades left and right. Rejected, rejected, rejected. Everybody thinks they're a GM. <laughs> well, it sounds like you need big rub to work the phones for you in two leagues. Get them just be like, I'll just give you extra money. And now you're running all my leagues. You know what? Rub, rub's grinding on the 
on our team. It's not the week one didn't look great. He's doing we'll his we'll real figure it out. But we'll you, you have to admit, it'd be funny if Big Rub like calls family members and is like, "We need to make a trade happen now." Like that'll be I would love that. The wheels. Yeah. This is the this is the GM uh, Rub. I'm gonna I'm gonna need to make a trade here. What do you got? Who'd you play week one that you lost to with the Cubs? Nico. Oh, tough. I'm shocked. He does fantasy football. He yeah. He did first overall pick. He was in it. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. I would not I would not expect him to play. Yeah. That's uh episode two twenty four of the compound podcast presented by Parse Rum. Parse, go to Benny's, get your Parse, tell them the compound sent you. Tell them I'm gonna put a little apple cider and Parse together. It's gonna be great. That's episode two twenty four. We'll see you next week.